In this video, we will see the offline benefits of station score. The prerequisite is to use the station score in offline. It is highly recommended to install the latest version of station score software application that we can able to download from the Omicron customer portal. Also, we can able to update where we have installed the station score software application. And then we need to have the dedicated cyber secure hardware either it may be MBX1 or RBX1, depending on your requirement, you can able to get one of the cybersecure hardware testing solution. After that, you can able to power up the, the device that you have with you. So in my case, I have the MBX1 um, dedicated cybersecure hardware test set. Um, on that MBX1, I have the station code commissioning license. Post opening the station code software application on the home screen this is what we do see under the available devices we could able to recognize the mbx1 so we basically need to connect the station code software install pc to the control port of the mbx1 either directly via ethernet fiber switch in the bit in between from the testing pc to the dedicated um, hardware testing solution so in case if you find the different uh, color code instead of um, green color you can always use omicron device link software application that install together when we install the station code latest version of um, software application so you can able to launch the omicron device link from the start menu also from the home screen of station code uh, software application there we can able to manage the ip address of the control port so you can able to assign the static IP address, also the automatic IP address. So device having the support of DSAP protocol. So the Windows operating system can able to um, decide the available IP address in case if you would like to use the DSAP um, protocol. So device also having the default support for the DSAP protocol. So in case if you would like to enable the top level option. So both the side, you need to have the, the same setting so that you can able to set the, associate the device to your testing PC, basically where you have the station code install, sub software install PC. And next, we can able to close this Omicron device link software. And under the available devices, you should be able to recognize the, the hardware with the green color code so that we can able to go further and then we can able to get the offline benefits of station code. When you keep keep the cursor on top of the MBX1, we could able to see the, the license information. So there are two different um, software license available for station code. So one is a station code smart overview, another one is station code commissioning license. And all these two licenses are unlimited. That means it's a, a lifetime license. And as long as you have the, the hardware with you healthy, you can able to get the free updates um, that are available for station code. So minimum we release one or two updates um, every year. So you can able to get all the benefits of new features that we um, provide for station code, some of the enhancement improvements related to different um, application testing that you can able to get uh, for free of cost. And by default, you get ID code license as well. When you have one of the station code um, software package, the license uh, that you have the that you have for the station code in the MBX one. And the smart overview provide you an option to import the different type of SCL file, and you can able to visualize them, and you can able to go online, and you can able to simulate many IDs um, and and the only difference in the station code commission license is you have an ability to create a test case um, with a commissioning license and you also get the the other information uh, the functionalities that is applicable for station code smart overview so the station code commissioning license is a super set of um, smart overview license so you get all the benefits by default when you have the station code commission license the commission license is a maximum license for the station code um, 2.10 software release and by default you get a id code uh, unlimited license it's also a lifetime license in both the packages so let's go um, further so as 
usual, like any other Omicron software, you'll get uh, the important um, functionality. So you can able to reach from the help menu. In the top right, there is a information icon that you can able to reach the help section by clicking the question mark icon. So it's important to know the application scope that you can able to understand how to set up the device, setting up the station guard, and how you can able to connect, and how you can able to import the SCL file, and what are the information that you get. So this is important um, to understand how you can able to use the software. And most of the cases, um, all Omicron um, softwares are user friendly, but it's also important to understand the different elements, the application scope, and how you can able to use in the different scenarios. And you can able to also visualize the different categories and the asset information, equipment, and how we can able to verify the configuration the network information, how you can able to set an IP address when you go online. So these are very important when you work with station code application. So the, the different icons and that helps you to understand the different problems and that you can able to understand in the top level when you're working with station code. So whenever you need more information, it's always recommended to go to the help section you can able to also search what the information that you really required for example like test uh, um, cases if you want to know how to create a test case and you can able to understand creating test case with a um, very simple steps and or the process that is required and you can able to also easily understand the information on the top level and test case creation and the test case workflow and how it works in the scenario when you have the, the commission license. This is also very important. And troubleshooting the event log um, that's available when you import the SL files. So it's important to understand the help section when you are working with station scope, uh, prayer, so that you save a lot of time to understand the different functionality and the icons and the error information that's available in the station's code user interface. So let me close from this um, help section. Okay, you can able to um, click the MBX1 hardware and there you can able to reach the main page of station's code, which is a system diagram. So by default, it's important to enable the, the password in case if you are working in a project, but in in my case, uh, I will be the one person who will be accessing the MBX one quite often, so I disable the password. So you can also enable the password um, to make sure the device is um, secured or accessed by the authorized people or team members in your environment. This is completely flexible. You can also disable in case if you are a frequent user um, so that you directly can able to access the device without providing the password. This is important when you're working with the, the real project so that um, you avoid the unauthorized um, access to the device so that the device can able to um, use it for simulation and it can able to use as a you know, client application, subscriber and many other important functionalities available. So it's important to secure the, the device in the real environment by enabling the password protection. Coming to the offline benefits, so on the top level, you can able to understand the, the features from the help section. Then we can able to start from the SCL file import, which is a step one. So you can able to select the file menu in case if you're using the station's code for the very first time. Otherwise, if there is another um, team member who has a project creator already, you can able to open the file, which is an ACC file. The, uh, the Automation Control Center uh, file format that we can able to import into the station's code once you define the project. So if you are a new user to station's code and you didn't create any project with station's code, then we can able to start from the import SCL file option. So upon selecting the file menu, you can able to reach the import SCL file option. Otherwise, you can able to just drag and drop the SCL file from the 
file explorer you can able to even just select the different type of SCL file and you can able to just drag and drop and you can able to get the op get this particular option and you can also able to select the similar um, get the similar functionality from the main 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 menu of the station score from the file menu so we allow to import all different type of SCL files that are supported by 61FT edition 2.1 so there are six different file formats um, are supported at the moment some of them are system specific files the first three SCL file formats the system configuration uh, description and the system specification description system exchange description these are the uh, file formats that describe the, the system information about your project and the other three file formats that are applicable for ID specific files that has the information about the specific ID. Those are the ID capability description or instantiated ID description, which is pre-configured and the ICD file in general is a template file and the CID is a configured ID description. So all six different type of files we can able to import into the station code software uh, user interface in offline. So I will select the SED file format so that I can able to get the maximum benefit from station code user interface to understand the, the configuration which has been defined in the SED file. So you can able to see post selecting the SED file on the top level, we could able to see the, the information about the SED file, which is relevant for the substation automation system testing point of view. So on the top level, I could able to understand the substation, which is Munich, and then under the substation, we could able to see the voltage level. And then the, under the voltage level, there are um, different base, um, transformer feeder one and two numbers of line base. And there's another transformer feeder two, and there is a bus coupler bay, and there is a, a low voltage side in the SAD file, which is three th um, 33 kV. And there are two transformer LV feeders available and some more station level devices like the SCAD HMI, um, RTUs, then the disturbance record collector and the bus bar protection ID for the whole system. We have the complete flexibility on the top level. We can able to enable what kind of information um, that we're gonna import into the station code. So you can able to import one of the voltage level for example, I can able to uncheck the, the high voltage, 320K voltage level. I can able to import only 33KV level, and I can even able to uncheck the 330, uh, the 33KV voltage level. I can able to only select the one of the bay um, IED, and then I can able to even select the specific information that are really required for my testing. So in my case, I will import the whole information from the top I can able to select the, the SED file and all the information will be selected that are part of the SED file. So let me import. Post import, what do I see? The system diagram is the state, step one where you can able to see the complete information. Under this, we have the substation. So I will create another video to explain how we can able to create the system diagram in case when we do not have the right information the different sections that are really required um, in the SED file to visualize the, the information on the top level in the station code to get maximum benefit. So this particular SED file, which I have imported has very good information. So we can able to see the substation, which is um, Minuc A1 um, defined as per the standard. Under this, we have station level devices. After I select the station level, devices section, I could able to see the different color codings that are going in and out of the, the selected section. So here I have five different IDs and these five different IDs are configured to send and receive different information. So that's why we could able to see the different color codings that are going from different voltage level and, and the different um, IDs that are belong to the different voltage levels. And how I can able to understand this um, different color codings very well. So it's very simple in the, in the top right side of the system diagram uh, in the main screen, where you can able to see the, 
the legends. The pink color stands for sampled value. Um, that means when we select the right ID. So here we can able to see in the Q05 bus coupler bay, there is a merging on it, which is configured to send the sample value to other IDs within the voltage level of 320 kV. So this is how we can able to understand. And the next one is the, the reports. That's um, the MMS communication. So which is defined in the aqua color. And for example, this particular ID also having the MMS um, protocol support, and it is also sending the information to different clients in the station level. And the next one is the goose messages that is defined in the violet color. So for example, if I select the bus coupler bay ID, there are so many goose messages are defined in this particular um, bus coupler bay ID. And the, the messages are easily identifiable from the color coding with a um, violet color. And next we have the, the dotted lines that defines about uh, incoming connection to the selected ID. For example, if I select this particular ID, I could able to see um, there are so many incoming connection with the dotted lines from the other IDs to the selected ID. And the dark line that denotes about the outgoing connection from the selected ID. That means there are some informations that are configured to be sent out of this ID. So those are highlighted in the dark line. So we have complete flexibility to filter this information. For example, I selected the transformer feeder one um, control ID, so the bay control uh, unit, also having the protect, basic protection for the transformer feeder in this particular voltage level. So for example, I would like to know what are the informations are defined to send this uh, send from this ID to the station level devices as a uh, reports. I can able to uncheck the sample value. I can able to uncheck the um, goose message. So I can able to understand, okay, these are the information which are defined to send from the selected ID to multiple clients, 670 client in the station level. So I can able to even select the particular line. I can understand the, the report control block information. So these are buffer report control block. I can able to also understand the, the book icon defines the, the buffer type of report control block. Under this, under this um, control block details, I can able to also understand who are the subscribers. So the SCAD HMI is the subscriber for this um, report control block instance. And these are the informations are transmitted to send that are part of the, the data set connected. And we can now able to also understand by expanding what are the information, the data object details further in detail in offline. We can able to flexibly zoom in and zoom out. So in case if you want to um, zoom in and visualize the data in detail. You can able to zoom in and zoom out by rolling over your mouse forward and backward. And you can able to also use the pan here in the right down. And you can able to reach and you can able to also use the, the buttons here to zoom in and zoom out. And you can also minimize by selecting the, the down arrow here. So to get the maximum benefit of the, the user interface. And you also also have the complete flexibility to drag and drop the, the pan in the right side of the overview and you can able to expand as you wish. When you need more information to know about the selected ID or selected information in the station's code user interface. And for example, always the source of the data comes from the the merging on it in case of digital substation and in case of conventional substation with um, 650 communication. Most of the informations are hardwired and the ID used to collect the, the data or um, sample values in case of digital substation. The current and voltages are in case of conventional substation. These are hardwired and we can able to get the information of current and voltages as a source to process further. The source care control units also send the information over MMS directly um, to the clients Sometimes the goose messages are used for passing the switchgear control information, the process level device 
to the bay level devices to subscribe and further to process for tripping and many other information for control interlocking and different applications special protection logics the source you can able to define the filter again enable it so from the merging unit we could able to get the current and voltages and further the information can able to send to the clients so on the top level we can able to understand by importing the SCL file the specifications are defined for our projects in a required way or not in a recommended way or not the expected informations are available or not that we can able to check by selecting the specific ID um, the right side we could also simplify the stations code to show show you the top level information for example the selected ID here um, we can able to see the overview the particular ID type and and the description of the ID and the nameplate details of the ID and we can also able to enable the access point and we can able to see the IP address where the different control blocks in general the 650 base substation used to exchange the data over three different um, communication services one is sample value and another one is goose communication and third one is the client server communication so all this informations are defined in a data set and it is mapped to the different control blocks like multicast sample value control block or the goose control block and then the report control block it may be a unbuffered or buffer type of report control block so all this information we can able to easily understand coming further in the down the communication details um, what type of control blocks so you can able to see there is a goose control block also the report control block with buffered and then buffered data um, connected data set and then there are some more information under this how many informations are configured to receive for the selected ID and most importantly you can also able to understand the the functions the ID functions are very well categorized so this is also very important for the user of stations code we could able to simplify the different ID functions in an easier way based on the standardized logical node um, first letter for example the protection um, logical nodes can be easily categorized and you can able to easily understand those protection um, logical nodes for example the PTOC the overcurrent protection um, then like or voltage of PTOV and for example distance protection PDIS so we could able to easily um, filter those information under the, and the ID functions that are very well categorized for example the control functions for the switch gear monitoring and controlling that we can able to understand from the control category and for interlock logical nodes there is a separate section you can able to also further expand and then visualize these logical nodes are defined correctly for the different um, equipments and the measurements like MMXU uh, logical nodes that are also available very well categorized for the different um, data objects and the automation function to supervise the, the specific ID also comes by default the informations are very well categorized in case if you would like to monitor specific information that is defined in the different data set and the control block that we can able to easily get in, under the ID functions and what informations are configured to send to communicate within the system or what informations are configured to receive from other IDs within the system that we can able to understand easily and you can able to further expand the goose control block and you can able to also see how many different subscribers are available for the selected ID and what informations are configured to send part of the goose control block and connected uh, data set for the goose control block and similarly for the report control block as well we can able to visualize and who's gonna associate the the report control block instance and the goose control block um, within the system and which informations are configured to receive that also we can able to understand here and next we can able to 
create the test cases when you have the Situations Code Commission license. It's also very good. You can able to create a test case in offhand. For example, assume this is um, the substation um, design, the single line diagram for the SCD file that I have imported in my Situations Code in offline. And I wanted to create a test case for verification of the interlock uh, functions or the control function for a specific equipment. Let's start with a uh, line bay. So I would like to close this particular isolator that is connected to the bus bar one of 320 kV voltage level. So let's start the QB1 isolator close interlock. So I also need to take the closest equipment connected to the, the same bus bar, also the different bus bar in the same um, bay. Also, the other base um, is also very important in this case. Uh, if you want to close the isolator that is connected to the bus bar one, also need to consider the, the other equipment, basically the, the bus bar one air switch from, from the bus coupler bay that is hardwired, also added to the goose control block so that the, the device that's available in the line bay when we are trying to close the isolator, it should understand the, the other information as per our design. Let's take um, the line bay, the Q02, and then we can able to select the test case, add test case in the right side, and we can able to choose the type of test case. Uh, in, in case, if we would like to create a test case for verification of um, interlock function, we go for the first one, the logic test. Then it's very simple to create a test case. There are different ways to create a test case. And we can also first provide the name of the test case. For example, in this case, Q0 to underscore QB1. Close interlock verification. This is uh, the test case name, and I would like to just add the inputs for the test case. So, what are the inputs are considered? We can able to see the scheme, also the logic defined in the the ID. Basically, it's recommended to see the the schematic diagram and where we can able to design the the test case to validate the, the close interlock. So you can able to also refer, for example, you can consider this is a scheme and these are the different signals and conditions, different scenarios and steps. And we can able to say in order to close on the QB1 isolator and these are the inputs required. So let's, it's very easy to create a test case. You can able to select the, the position, the QB1 and the QA1 from the same way. For example, in order to close this QB1, I would like to take consider the QB2 and the QA1 from the same way. I would like to also consider the other equipments that, has, that are part of the bus coupler bay. So I just need to add the equipment um, status. I can able to just say the control position of the same way, the QB2 and the QA1 switch controller so that I can able to even change this uh, position while executing the test case automatically in the live condition when I go to the real project. Then I will also consider the, the other position from the bus coupler bay. This is switch and the breaker and the other isolator are connected to the bus bar 1 and bus bar 2 to couple the, the bus on the high voltage side. So these are the inputs that is required. So basically the logics that we do define in the different ID configuration tools like PCM600 for ABB IDs or Dixie, um, we use CFC um, there. And then if it is a Alstom uh, make substation, we use CT64 as a bay control in it. And then depending on the ID that we do use, the logics that we do create from different applications like PSL, CFC, 
FPD function block diagram and the application configuration tools. The logic can be easily understandable from ID configuration tool. Also from the schematic, we can able to understand and add those inputs. Then we can able to define the assessment. What exactly we are going to assess? We're going to assess the QB1 close enable. Okay, this is uh, the, the status which we're going to assess. That's an uh, interlocking status for the QB1 enable close. We can able to add this data point. You can able to see when you keep the cursor on top of the data point, the, um, the path of the particular data point, which we can able to see in the tooltip. And we can also able to even assess the command. So for example, I have added two switch controller, the QB2 and QA1 from the same bay. I can also assess when I am able to execute as a next step. The first step is the signal. Under this, I have execution. I can able to execute the control commands for the controllable logical nodes of QA1 and QB2. I can also able to assess the, the control command for the QA1 and QB2. So I can able to even add those controllable logical nodes and then I can able to add the QB2 as well here and then I can able to expand the execution. I can say I can able to enable the automatic um, setting of the control values. So station scout has the ability to set the control values automatically. So that the test case that we're going to create can be um, used in both ways. You can able to use as a manual option and you can also get the benefit of automatic execution of the test case by enabling this ex execution method. When you uncheck, that means it's manual mode. And when you check this box and the assessment and the control value executed automatically. And you can also able to have the control over the flexibility um, in terms of how long the switching operation takes in the real project. If it is a three pole isolator or circuit breaker in the high voltage side, sometimes the time can be more than expected from the, the default time. You can able to have the control over here flexibly and in order to get the feedback, also the operation time and the response time can be increased if the system is taking more time. So you can able to say finish test case at this moment and you can able to set the expected value by going to the test case. The expected values, for example, we have seen there are different scenarios, right? So we can able to see them. The scenario is one by one. So if all positions are open, we are allowed to close the isolator. If one of the position from the same bay, like the breaker is closed, then we are not allowed to close the isolator. So let's take these two different scenarios. Okay, if all occupants are open, then we can easily say that we can able to close the isolator. So let's say if all positions are open from the same bay, switching equipments and the bus coupler bay, we are allowed to. And we can also say here, this is an assessment that we need to define correctly. So this is very important. So we can say close enable can be true if all positions are open. We can able to close the isolator. And in this case, if the isolators are closed, I can say by saying open because we are setting open position and you can also just say position should be changed if the isolator or breaker is closed before we proceeding this test case. We can just say expected value if these are the expected values and my expected uh, assessment should be true. This is like creating test case to validate the scenario. And this is one of the scenario. Let's create another scenario, which is very easy. You can able to add another step and you can able to say if the breaker is closed. Another scenario would be if the breaker is closed and rest of the positions are open. I could able to see the close interlock should be false. So this is another scenario. You can able to just say position should be changed and I don't want to change any position here and you can able to say no operation you can able to flexibly manage the different um, additional costs for the switching operation assessment depending on your requirement that you are using in your scenarios 
And next, you can also say uh, another scenario. For example, um, let's if the bus bar one as such is closed, so we are not allowed to close the isolator. So in this case, I can able to also add another scenario by adding another test step. And you can able to even see open the circuit breaker. I can able to define the close position of the disconnector QC11, which is a bus bar one as such. In that case, still my close enable should be false. So I can able to say no operation or you can able to change the position by changing, changing the, the equipment in case if you are switching the equipment from one position to another position. I can able to, if there is an interlock um, for a certain situation, you can also able to define to verify. This is optional, but you can also use it when you are going for the assessment in the live substation or before you go for the energizing the substation during the, the site acceptance testing commissioning process, you can able to use the different conditions. So you can able to set the expected value. So there are three different test scenarios we can able to see that's ready here already. And we can also able to create test case when you are in a simulation situation. You can able to add another test case for simulating the signal. This is possible when you are designing your substation and you wanted to simulate the signals um, to verify the SCADA communication and many other different scenarios you can able to simulate the signals even for the extension bay when you have the existing SCADA system using stations code in the factory acceptance testing or the laboratory environment in the different use case scenarios. So let's say I would like to verify the switching equipment status. switching equipment state change. So I would like to add the signals. For example, I can able to just select the, the equipment. I can able to just insert the signal here by selecting the right arrow mark. I can able to say, so these are the three different position. I would like to simulate. I can able to add the test step. By default, we do provide the predefined steps for the double point control command. So we can able to see the default switching position are available automatically and you can able to use also the automatic setting value of control and finish the setup. The test case is ready for the three different um, controllable logical nodes. So you can able to easily execute the simulation option when you are simulating an ID. And for example, you want to also simulate the measurement value. You can also create the, another signal test. You can able to choose the ID can able to reach the measurement values here. So for example, you can able to add the phase currents, phase to phase voltage from the measurement um, ID function group. And then you can also able to add the different values here. And by default for the measurement, we provide zero value and you can able to add the further, add the further steps here by adding the plus icon here. You can able to define phase current 100 ampere. Then you can able to set the expected value and go back here, you can able to add further 200 ampere, you can able to even change the phase angle in case you would like to also monitor the phase angle, you can able to further add 300. So you can able to increase the value like 10%, 20%, 50%, 80, 100% based on your CT and VT ratio for different base. So once you create a test case for a specific bay and you can able to even duplicate um, the same test cases in a typical bay environment. For example, I have to create a test case in the Q02 bay and I would like to uh, duplicate the test case in another typical bay. So now there is another line bay in our single line diagram that you can able to see. There are two different lines. So Q02 and Q03 are the line bays and most of the cases in the same voltage level, the parameters are same for the control measurement and the logical nodes also same, even the including including the interlock signals. 
So I selected the another bay, the Q03. I don't have any test case. What I can able to do is I can able to just select the, the ID where I have created test case. I can able to see there is another icon, duplicate test cases. I can able to just select the duplicate test cases option. I can able to just pick where I want to duplicate this test case. I can able to say there is a Q03 QA1 bay. This is another bay control unit. Um, and there is another protection ID under the same bay. I can able to say duplicate. So if I go to another bay, I could able to see all the test cases which I have created at another line bay came automatically by easily duplicating the test case. So these are um, some of useful benefits in offline that we can able to get it in the top level. And then we can also able to create a test case using the signal for example you can able to even rename this for measurement verification measurement signal verification and you can easily by importing the signal um, offline so you can able to see by selecting add from signal list there you can able to import the signal list that you can able to export from different ID configuration tools. So most of the um, ID configuration or system configuration tools has the ability to export the, the signal list in Excel format. You can able to get them to get this signal list. You can able to copy that followed from the, the tag name, start from the, the physical device and the ID name and logical device, logical node, data object, and the state value, the data attribute. So you can able to copy and paste the signals that automatically comes here. You can able to add the signals can be easily imported without by selecting one by one and you want don't want to add to the signal list. This is an alternate option. You can directly add the, the assessment signal that you wanted to do, do it. For example, in this case, I have added the, the Q0 one Q0 bay one this is uh, bay number one I would like to add the close enable sorry not this level the signal assessment then it's ready you can able to also add the, the switching command assessment not for QB1 and QB2 then QA1 in case if you would like to also assess the command signal so the signal list is ready and you can able to set automatic option you can able to flexibly control this is another way you can able to set the value by importing the signal list easily if all positions are open we are allowed to change to a no operation based on the situation scenario you can able to set up this is another option that we can able to import you can able to rename the test case and signal name can be easily um, changed within stations code to make um, the easy understanding for the different um, IEC 650 reference and description for the different data attributes so you can able to see um, I have selected one of the um, equipment and it has the, the description for circuit breaker like breaker position and then for example here disconnector position and there is another disconnector position and I wanted to also know the exact reference can be renamed or not for the different uh, disconnector. I can able to directly rename for example if wanted to rename for multiple um, data attributes that you can able to easily do it from the file menu and you can able to also see here there is an option to import signal names so you can able to export all the signal names from different system configuration tool and you can able to add the new reference and you can able to say control C control A and then you can able to paste control V here and there is a new name so you can able to provide the new name in the Excel sheet in the different um, column. So these are the new name will be updated into stations code. 
So as a bulk import, you can able to rename many different IEC 620 um, signal name or tags. So there you can able to see the signal name has been changed for three different equipments. So this is also possible in offline in case if you would like to change the, the description of the different signal within stations code. Another useful information is you can able to even get the asset information list from the file menu. You can able to export the nameplate data. So I will export here in the downloads option. So you can able to go to stations code. I will say ID list, for example. We'll copy this path. We'll export here. The information has been exported. So I will start the Excel sheet. So here I can able to select the data menu, then you can able to select the file from text and CSV. So the format that we have exported from station code is CSV and we can able to import in this particular level. So I can able to choose the Excel file, the CSV file format into Excel file and I can able to see the nice um, asset inventory list from station code. I can able to load the file to the Excel and I can able to get nice overview about the different um, ID nameplate data that are part of the, the CD file that we have imported. So these are the technical key, the 620 ID name, and the description of the different IDs and the hardware, the MLFB code tech code or the order option code for the different ID that we do use and the model number, also serial number if it's available in the, the nameplate data of the 620 ID under the LPHD logical node, the physical um, nameplate data object with the different data attributes. So we can able to collect those information, including the software reference and the vendor name, and the IP address of the ID and the source of the information that we collected. So this is very good. Sometimes we spend a lot of time to collect this information. The main days will take uh, one or two days, depending on the, on the substation that we do have with many IDs and voltage level. And with stations code, we can able to easily go online even with a real substation. And in, in offline, we can able to export the asset information easily from the CD file. And for example, you can able to save all this information as a ACC file by selecting file, file menu, you can able to save. And there is another option, the save button in the top level, you can able to use it, both option. Can able to see station scout offline. So I have saved the file in offline. So I can able to close my project. Can able to see no, I already saved, there is no new change. Can able to open the file that I have imported. Sorry, X saved. And I can able to see all the test cases that I have created, rename, and whatever the work that I have did. For example, the test case that I have created as saved as ACC file that we can able to share with another team member, like the design team can share with uh, factory acceptance testing team, and the factory acceptance testing team can able to do some changes based on the customer requirement. Some modification can be there uh, in the test case in the real environment. And further, it can be distributed to the to the commissioning team. And the commissioning team can able to um, get the, the benefits. And in case if there is any changes required in the commissioning, sometimes the customer need more um, changes in the test cases, then it can be covered and can able to save as a CC file that we can able to further provide it um, shared with the, the operation team and for site accepting testing and post commissioning like firmware update um, later on for the, the vulnerability that we observe in the different IDs 
and sometime in the extension bay that going to come for the future projects uh, in the same substation and typical substation that we can also make use of the test cases that we created and you can able to basically uh, use stations code throughout your entire system life cycle of your substation automation system projects and i can also able to show you um, some more features for example i can able to go to the file new and i can able to even load one of the big project able to see file open there is another big project so i will lo load so the project that i have opened before the cl file it has very limited id so this one is having more than 50 ids and around 60 70 ids and you can also able to visualize this information Basically, the ICD files are getting loaded into the station scope user interface now. Depending on the size of the ICD file, it takes your minutes so i have created many different test cases in this particular acc file that also takes a couple of um, time to load this file so the project has been loaded now you can able to see um, it's a 400 kv uh, substation design it's well defined and with different category so you can able to see the station level devices and there are so many different base in the 400 kv voltage level you can able to just um, scroll down in the right side by just dragging up in the left side you can able to also use the pan in the left in the down to reach the complete right in the middle also left easily and you can able to visualize for example i would like to know whether the reports are defined correctly um, in the station level from different ids i can able to just select the, the main um, hmi in the top level station level i could able to see so many ids are getting loaded in the right side so this particular uh, hmi client in the station level designed to receive the reports from 67 numbers of ids that are in the in the different voltage level in the system and you can able to easily understand um, this type of um, engineering is properly done or not in order to receive the reports from different ids quickly in the station scope by importing the, uh, the sed file in in offline so you can able to even create a test case for example in, in 401 bay there are so many test cases created to verify the bay mimic um, different positions and there are so many other test cases to verify the the different um, signals in the specific base like the cubicle um, box uh, information signals that we do collect from the process level um, to monitor the circuit breaker inputs the axillary inputs that we do map in the specific bay mimic for the particular bay and the matching data that we can able to easily define the different values and we can able to easily duplicate such information in the typical base and you can able to understand the different color codings so where exactly the information are configured to send and receive within the system maybe i will close this particular project so we'll also show you how this project came from beginning so you just need to import the SEL file again this is a cd file that we have used to create the, the acc file so this is one of the big um cd file that you can imagine for a normal substation it has many different um, 
base in, in single voltage level and you can able to see there are almost 23, 25, 26 base and many different uh, station level devices also available like main um, HMI, standby HMI client and main gateway and standby gateways and you can also see in the left side down the progress how many ids are getting imported into stations code so total 70 ids are available in this scd file and almost 15 ids are getting imported at the moment and we could able to see um, many different benefits basically i would like to just show you the client configuration the different reports and then i will just export the the set details that are available in the cd file in this particular use case. You can able to select a specific um, equipment and this particular equipments are um, having different um, logical nodes for controlling um, then the position and it also have the, um, the synchro check as auto recloser depending on the equipment that we select and connect is it properly mapped defined that also we can able to check did we use a standardized logical node or not so so many different um, specification checks that we can able to easily um, get in the top level so for example selecting the specific equipment and we can able to understand so these particular equipments are mapped to which different type of um, communication so it is belong to buffer report control block and goose report control block so because it's circuit brackets need to be um, sent to the client um, the scale hmi and the gateways so you can also able to see there are two different hmis are receiving this particular data and there's two more um, ids are defined to subscribe the the goose message for this equipment so id has been imported so all the ids that are part of the cd file so you can also able to go to the event log and then see the different uh, warnings and error messages in case you would like to dig more in detail about the so these are the the specification checks based on the common data classes and the mandatory and uh, optional logical data attributes um, for the specific logical nodes. So let's come back to the system diagram. I can able to just say, so this is um, this HMI and this is configured to receive this many reports from different IDs. And you can able to also see the filtering very well that I have already explained. You can also able to select um, the gateways and give you also defined to receive the report from 21 IDs and from different bay levels and voltage levels in the system and you can able to just select ID and you can able to similarly expand the different ID functions and then further expand the, the specific equipment and measurement signals and automation signals able to export the signal list sorry the asset information so export option provide you station squad project offline i will just go to excel file i'll create a new file that I go to data I'll just import the file that I've exported here so here we could able to see the different IDs that are part of the SD file for example I will just load this information so we get very good asset inventory for example in this case the ID name the network name part of the 650 project and the description so this particular SD file has many different ID models 
GE multilane might come make um, protection control IDs and wake control units from GE CT64 and then there are so many um, ABB relays RAT and many main two relays also available and you can also see the, the hardware version and the model number also the serial number if you connect to the real ID it also will be collected it will be also collected uh, from the real ID, you can able to get this information as well, and you can also get the software version, and then the vendor name, and the IP address. So this is a very good asset inventory list, and how many IDs are part of the SD file that you can able to see clearly, including the, the station level devices, also the gateways and the and the bus protection IDs, and the time servers. You can able to save the Excel file as a certain entry. You can also update. So these are the different offline um, benefits that we can able to get in stations code without connecting our PC um, to any other network. Um, so in case if you'd like to know more information or in case if you have any doubts, feel free to contact Omicron Technical Support. Um, from the support line email, so you can able to reach the support line email from the Omicron web page. You can able to contact um, the support line email from the support category. There is a technical support option. There you can able to get the different support line emails depending on the location where you are located. You can able to choose the right region then raise the technical support and we will be happy to support you with the right solution. Thank you. Take care. Bye-bye.